Okay guys, these things are super, super easy to make. One thing you might wanna keep in mind is uh, find like a, a cooking sheet or use some foil or even a piece of tile. A lot of times you can find a piece of tile laying around somewhere and that'll kind of just protect your, service, your surfaces and uh, make sure that any, maybe some wax that might get spilled will be on the tile or the, fi the foil or the cookie sheet. So just a quick little tip on, on something underneath this pot warmer. So setting it up, super easy. Almost anybody can find some bricks. So bricks are ceramic. They don't, they're not gonna burn up on you. They hold heat. So find three or four bricks, place them around the edge so that it'll hold this pot. All right, so these terracotta pots, they're just they're just planting pots that you can find at Home Depot, any garden store. Um, you can find all different kinds of sizes. So what I did is I went ahead and picked up a couple of the smaller ones to hold the candles just to keep all the wax contained. I thought that might be kind of a tricky little idea. You can use tea light candles, which you can buy a huge bag of them for like under five bucks. You can also find these larger ones, which will burn for a lot longer. The tea light ones will burn for up to four hours, these guys should burn a lot longer. Next step is light them. And put the big pot on top of them. And then you want to plug the upper hole. This is probably the easiest way to plug it up. Just grab one of uh, the bottom base pieces for the pot and put it on top. It's as easy as that. It doesn't matter what size. You can get the small pots, the medium pots, the large pots. They're all going to do the same thing. So I went ahead and grabbed a couple of the small ones just to show you. There's all kinds of different ways to build these things. You can double stack them, triple stack them, and the more ceramic you got, the more ceramic's gonna heat up. So this is kind of a small scale idea of a double stack. Everyone, this is an incredible thing to know how to do. Who knows when the electricity goes out? or if there's some kind of crazy pandemic and who knows what happens and power goes out, the grid, I don't know. But to know how to warm a room, it's say 30 degrees outside, you lose heat, you run a generator, you run out of gas, you got a little stockpile of candles and a couple clay pots. You can make this thing. You can heat a small room. I think it was like four hours and you could have a, a smaller size room warm. These little tea lights put out 40 watts a piece. So you stick, say four of them underneath one of these pots, you're looking at 160 watts of heat. And there's other tips other tips to keep that room a little bit warmer. And you know, that's putting blankets and sheets over the windows and putting uh, towels or a blanket across the, the bottom of the floor to keep that draft from coming in. There's a lot of cool designs you can, you can do with these. Uh, I've seen pictures of guys putting multiple layers together uh, with a series of of bolts and washers separating them. 
You can hook loop hooks at the top. You can have them hanging on chains. Um, there's single stack, double stack. If you've got time, you can get really creative and have some pretty neat little units you can go around and hang up. Um, but, you know, in the sake of emergency, this is just the simple way you put this thing together. Another super cool thing about this technique is uh, it's incredible with condensation. Uh, a lot of other methods, you know, I don't know if any of you have been out camping, uh, you have condensation problems. This type of heater almost eliminates condensation. There's a couple reasons why we showed you the little tile trick for having a big old landing for the whole thing to sit on. Um, not everybody has a hard surface. You might be dealing with carpet. There is one cautionary measure with this type of system. Uh, first and foremost, you don't wanna leave something like this unattended. So uh, the other thing is it's been said that when you put these little tea lights super close together and you actually get that pot heated up to a super, super hot temperature, the wax can heat up so much that it can catch on fire. So it's recommended to keep your candles spaced, not touching, like in the picture here to the right. Keep them spaced out so that uh, it doesn't get too hot. I mean. You can always look in there. I mean, if you got wax boiling, then you're probably getting a little too hot. Uh, other than that, the, the pot will be too hot to touch. The If you've got a bolt system in there, definitely can't touch that, you'll get burnt. And you just wanna put it in a smart spot. I mean, make sure that nothing around it is flammable. Uh, common sense on where it is. Imagine if it was to catch on fire is it gonna catch anything else on fire around it? And again, you shouldn't have an issue if you space out the candles. So I've had this particular one running for about 10 minutes now. Um, it's not really, it's warm down here. As I go up, I can't touch right there. That's too hot to touch. So it goes to show that these things heat up pretty good. So whether it's Texas losing their power in a cold climate, or say it's uh, your neighborhood, power goes out for a day, a week, uh, you can rest assured that you can at least heat a room and stay warm. Staying warm when it's cold is a super, super sense of security. And in some cases, it could save lives. I hope this tip helps. Keep it in your back pocket. Get this cheap stuff, have it stored in a safe place in case you ever need it.